guys and welcome back to my channel, actually his channel to be honest. Um, and today I was thinking of doing a video that I personally like watching when I'm just like looking on YouTube. And that would be 10 things I didn't know before I had a Malamute. The reason why I put a camera there is because that is his favourite place. So in order to have him starring in this video, we have to put the camera wherever he likes to stay. Let's start with number one. Before I had a Malamute, I didn't know that some dogs can be so stubborn and so independent. I read about this particular Malamute trait, but I did not believe it to be true. I didn't think that was going to be my Malamute. Like, for instance, you can go for a walk with him, and if he is off the leash, and he doesn't want to come to you, or he finds something that is much more interesting to him than you, which is pretty much everything else, uh, at this stage at least, um, he will not come to you and he will ignore you completely. Number two would be treat based training does not work, at least not with him. Every trainer that we looked that is around our area are offering this type of training, like th this is their this is their style of training, it's like based on treats and positive reinforcement and toys and that just does not work with him, we tried it with a trainer, we also tried it ourselves and the main issue that we end up having is that he gets bored very quickly, he gets bored of all the treats and all the toys very quickly. So that just doesn't work. So for instance, if we go out for a walk with him and he would see like a rabbit bunny or a squirrel or something, you can have the nicest treat in the world that is just not going to work with him. Number three, third thing I didn't know before I had a Malamute is that you have to earn your dog's affection. Like with all the dogs that I had previously, they would come to me for affection. They would give me affection constantly, and that's why. That's probably why because they were guard dogs, and guard dogs are like you are their world essentially. Their world revolves around you, and they always want to please you, and they always want to be in your face. While with him, it's not like that. I found that he was like very stingy with his affection, and he would just not give it. Um, at all times, you just give it actually quite rare and especially not when you ask for it so when he does end up giving you affection and then when he comes in your face and he puts his forehead on your chest and stays there for like forever you appreciate it even more, I have to say Number 4, I didn't know was that they can be so unpredictable it's crazy, like it's crazy you can walk with him one day and he would like come to you at all times, his recall would be on point. It would be like, what? Whose dog is this? This is not my dog. I know this is not my dog because my dog does not come every single time. I'm calling him. There are some days where he can just come every time you call him. He'll be around you. He will not wander off. And you think, I must be doing something right. And then the next day comes along and he just starts again wandering off doing whatever he pleases and ignoring you whenever you call him which we are really trying to work on number five would be they are master of escapes and when i say they're master of escapes you would not believe that this this is another thing that i read but i didn't really believe in and we started tra uh, crate training him ever since we brought him so we brought him up four months old and we tried crate training him. We put him in a crate. We would put him in the crate. We would leave the room. And then when we came back, like 10, 15 minutes later, he would be outside of the cage. And that is not the mystery, ladies and gentlemen. The mystery was the cage was locked. Like both locks of the cage door, of the crate door, were locked. Until one particular night when we noticed that he was he got stuck like he got stuck straight away in between uh, like, so half of him was outside the gate in the crate and half of him was inside the crate so he got stuck there so from that point on we decided to quit on the crate training because it just wasn't for him and he was gonna hurt himself number six finding a proper harness or a harness or a color that would fit him or anything really that would fit him is 
proven to be a challenge mainly because he is not a regular size Malamud, he is a giant Malamud. This is not, I don't think there's like an official thing, like an official term for that, but he is like a huge Malamud. So he's, he's now at, well, he was actually at seven months old, the size of an abnormal adult Malamud, and he still has some time to grow left. So we are really struggling to find something that would fit him. And I ordered two, um, so I ordered a large and I ordered an extra, extra large harness for him lately and none of them fit, them, fit him. And it's really, really frustrating um, because I measured him and somehow it still doesn't fit or like it would go over his neck, absolutely no problem. And then it wouldn't fit him around his waist, like here above his legs. We will have to keep digging for that, to be honest. Number seven would be, they are the most chill dogs you will ever find when it comes to going to other people's houses or when it comes to going to a restaurant or a pub or a bar, anywhere, and you have your mouth with you, you would probably know, or at least I'd know, the fact that um, they are very, very chill. They take that moment as being their resting moment. They know what's happening. They know you're sitting down and they're supposed to sit down. So there are very, very common circumstances like that. We even had one incident when we've been to um, a pub with him and he was only like, what, six, six, seven months old? And he lay down there and this little girl came and the little girl like pet him, fussed him for like, a good hour like constantly she would, and he just stood there absolutely without any problems enjoying it number eight okay. number eight would be they absolutely hate bath time they hate bath time with a passion and i was hoping that my mouth yeah I'm talking about you i was hoping that my mouth would not be the kind of malamute that would hate bath time i was hoping this was going to be easy and guess what, it wasn't. We also took him swimming, which he didn't like very much, that he hates having his back wet, that's what I noticed. But he has absolutely no problem with puddles. If he's off the leash and there is a puddle, or there is, I don't know, there is some mud, he will be right in it. He loves going in them with like little rivers and such. And as they just go up to his chest. So he loves the water from that point of view. He just does not like being fully in the water. Historically, um, they probably, the only time they were actually in the water was when they were in danger and when they were drowning. Number nine is they will walk with whoever is in the front. So say you're with a group of friends and you are somewhere at the back or you're with some strangers and you're somewhere at the back and the people are at the front. He will always be with the people at the front. Probably, again, historically, there used to be, there, there were sleigh dogs, right? So they always used to have to guide to safety their pack and, you know, their people and the people are their pack. So they have to guide them to safety. That is another shocking thing because for me, I thought my dog should be by my side, not by my friend's side, which is like right at the front. But no, I mean, this one here didn't care. He was right at the front. Number 10 is they are very, very sensitive to their human's pain and sadness. Every time I get sad, or if I hurt myself, he will come running to see what is happening and he would give me kisses and he would give me cuddles and he would be like all around me. So they're very, very sensitive when it comes to that, which I wasn't expecting. And my other, my other dogs were like quite, quite sensitive towards that, but he is just to another level. He feels, even if you like, don't cry out loud, out loud or if you're just like a bit quiet, they sense straight away that something is wrong. And then they're very receptive when it comes to that. Those are my 10. I feel like I have to say, this is just from my experience. Obviously, I don't have the experience with other mouths, but this is just what I noticed is different in him versus my previous dogs. You might be lucky enough that you have a dog that has a perfect recall, 
that doesn't go at the front with a stranger, that doesn't follow someone that is running versus following you to the in the opposite direction. Yeah, but for me, these are the, some of the traits that I noticed in him that are different. And we love him very much. He's a character. He's a goofball. He always makes us laugh. For instance, as soon as you pick up the popcorn in the cupboard, in the kitchen, he knows, he senses the smell. So he realizes straight away you're, gonna about, you're about to come in with the popcorn and he's all over you. Like he sits right in front of the sofa and I know I'm guilty of it, but I just, I give him sometimes a little bit of popcorn just because I feel sad about him, about letting him just stare at us with those puppy eyes. Apart from that, we're not giving him any other food or we're trying to avoid giving him human food because his stomach is quite sensitive and we don't want him having like any eczema or you know a bad tummy so we're trying to avoid that but yeah these are the 10 things that i noticed if you notice something different about your malamu that is different to other dogs that you previously had please let me know in the comments down below because i'm sure i missed quite a lot yeah if you like this video don't forget to subscribe and Click the like button if you liked it and click the notification bell so you can be notified every single time we're posting a new video. Until next time, bye!